In this episode of The Girlfriend Doctor Show, we talk about being misled about menopause. And there was a New York Times magazine article that was published on February 1st, 2023, so just recently, and received it digitally Sunday, February 5th. And I went live on this subject. So I want to share that live with you. This is a long one. I answer questions from our community group. But the key thing is the discussion about menopause and hormone therapy and um, what went so wrong and what do we need to do to really balance our hormones as we go through menopause? And I am a proponent for bioidentical hormone therapy as needed. And however, with that said, I am an advocate of hormone replenishment, not replacement per se. So hormone replenishment, in other words, empowering your body to support its natural hormone production, detoxing hormones that we don't need and endocrine disruptors or hormone mimickers so that we detox them safely and encouraging our body to make as much of its own for as long as possible because healthy ovarian function is a marker of longevity. And it is our right to breeze through menopause into the second spring of our life. So listen to this discussion. Let me know what your questions and comments are. I appreciate you. Remember, you can ask or tell me anything. I love being the your girlfriend doctor. Dr. Anna Kabeca here, and I am here to talk about menopause, all things menopause. And I was really inspired today. There's an article published in the New York Times Magazine called entitled Women Have Been Misled About Menopause. And I couldn't agree more. This is probably one of the best summary, summary articles I have read I have read about menopause and it has been so well done. So I really encourage you to read the article in the New York Times Magazine by Susan Dominus and it was published February 1st and I just read it this morning, this Sunday morning, um, February 5th and it is an excellent summary of what's going on in for women in menopause before, during and after. What the research over the past two decades has lacked in lacked where it has lacked and also how medical education has lacked, but also the true journey of women. And I, I really wanna emphasize this one statement that is published here. And it said something to the fact, I can't find it right now. It said something to the fact that considering women's suffering and how much women have had to tolerate due to the lack of information around menopause, it seems that women are just being left to suffer. And I, again, I want to talk about this because this is such an important issue and an area that is so personal to me, having struggled with early menopause when I was 39, finding my own doctor's bag empty. And I trained at one of the best institutions in the world at Emory University. And my own doctor's bag was empty, completely empty in treating myself. And when you get a premature menopause diagnosis or an infertility diagnosis, it feels like the diagnosis, right? That's your destiny, but it's not. Your diagnosis is not your destiny. I went on to reverse early menopause and naturally become pregnant and have a baby spontaneously at age 21, at, at age 41. I was age 41 when I had her. So, so much power in our ability to fix our hormones, to adjust our hormones. And I write about this, my book published in 2019 called The Hormone Fix. So this published on the many aspects to manage our hormones and Dr. Andre Venetia says, best book ever, The Hormone Fix. Thank you. And um, in The Hormone Fix, I write very clearly that, Bom dia, um, Brazil, how are you? Then hello to Dr. Andre. In my book, The Hormone Fix, I write that it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. It absolutely does. Now, hormone therapy is a part and parcel. Customizing hormone therapy is critical. I wanna go over this article because it's so good. Again, the article published, Women Have Been Misled About Menopause, published in the New York Times Magazine. I wanna share that with you and I wanna talk about hormone replacement. 
therapy. This is compounded hormone replacement therapy. There are different forms of hormone therapy. And I like to talk about hormone replenishment over replacement. And I'll get into that more in a little bit. And I want to share that using the a little bit about the Women's Health Initiative study. This article started um, and is written again by Susan Dominus. And she talks about her journey with hot flashes, perimenopausal symptoms, and her um, her treatment as she went into the gynecologist and the way she was advised or recommended to hormone therapy. And she dug into the research. So I want to talk about this because it is significant. And about 85% of women experience menopausal symptoms. 85% of women experience menopausal symptoms. Listen, menopause is natural and mandatory, but suffering is optional. Suffering is optional. And that is so true. I couldn't agree more. It's really powerful. Um, and we do need to be self-educated on our hormones. We need to be self-educated on our own body, what the changes are so that we can intervene as early as possible. So many of the symptoms associated with early menopause are hot flashes, mood swings, um, irregular menstrual cycles, and breakthrough bleeding, heavier than normal periods, worsening symptoms of PMS, mood swings, heart and the ones that aren't so commonly associated, the hair loss, the crashing fatigue, the heart palpitations, aching in your legs, restless leg syndrome, and um, and the list goes on, right? The list, the list goes on. There are a lot of symptoms. The big ones that affect our life is also the genitourinary changes, the bladder leaking, the vaginal dryness, the discomfort with sex. As our you know, as our hormones change, the vaginal pH becomes more alkaline, so there is more odor down there. Doesn't have to be. Again, menopause is natural and mandatory. Suffering is optional. So in this article. Um, it goes through some of the history about hormone replacement, how Premarin came to market in 1940s. Um, and this was popularized in a book by Robert, uh, Dr. Robert Wilson, who wrote in 1966 the book Feminine Forever. And it, and I like how the author talks about this. She says that. Feminine forever can be considered a kind of historical landmark, the start of a vexed relationship for women and hormone therapy. The book was very bold for its time. And to quote, um, in, it, it, in that it recognized sexual, sexual pleasure as a priority for women, but it also displayed a frank contempt for aging women's bodies and pitched hormones in the service of men's desires. So a double-edged sword on that one, right? But we want to own our femininity forever. We want to own the health of our body, our spiritual energy, and this cathedral, this temple of our spirit, this cathedral of our spirit, and um, for our own joy and pleasure, predominantly, what's bringing us pleasure versus what is causing us um, trouble um, or our partner problems. And so estrogen, Premarin came out in the night, you know, came out and was released as, you know, hey, this should be in our water. This is like the answer to for women during perimenopause, menopause, and to help them on their journey. But yet what happened was that women were given estrogen, Premarin, oral estrogen. And we talked about, uh, they were taking oral estrogen and they noticed while well, women had an increased risk of endometrial cancer. Why? Because unopposed estrogen, estrogen dominance, excess body fat or estrogen production, unopposed by progesterone, increases the lining, increases the thickness of the endometrium. So what does that mean? That can lead to hyperplasia and cancer. And so that's what unopposed estrogen was showing. So then the makers of Premarin, which is Wyatheris, in fact, a company I worked with back in the early 90s, before I went to med school, I worked in their drug metabolism department, and they are the makers of the famous Premarin Provera, oral hormone replacement therapy. So they created Provera, a synthetic progestin. So they created the synthetic progestin to oppose estrogen, but only women who had a uterus were prescribed this because the theory was that, well, if you don't have 
a uterus, you're not going to get endometrial cancer. Therefore, you don't need this synthetic progestin. And the reason it's synthetic is because bioidentical progesterone could not be patented until we got pro Prometrium, which was a bioidentical progesterone in a slow release peanut oil. And the, the delivery method was patented. And so that was a way we as gynecologists could prescribe a bioidentical progesterone that um, was often covered by their insurances. The benefit, however, of customizing therapy using compounded hormones is a whole nother level. And again, I wasn't taught that in residency. I learned that after the fact and trying to help my patients and trying to help myself with balancing hormones. Now, why the Women's Health, the Women's Health Initiative study looked at Premarin and Provera and they, in women with uterus who had a uterus, and they looked at Premarin alone in women without a uterus. And the reason, again, is because their thought is that, well, if you don't have a uterus, you don't need a, you know, you're not going to get endometrial cancer. So you don't need progestin. You don't need this Provera. And then the re the research was halted in 2002 with, you know, essentially front page news that hormone replacement therapy increases your risk of breast cancer and blood clots. And it, the, you know, very much misinformation. There was a lot of misinformation around interpreting this data. Plus, the delivery method was oral, oral estrogens and oral progesterones. And we know from research that oral estrogens increase your risk of uh, inflammation, increase your risk of blood clot, just like birth control pills can increase your risk of blood clots because the oral estrogen and synthetic progestin. So those are reasons that the progest, you know, that's, that's the, one of the reasons this study was so flawed, good intention, right, to show hormone replacement therapy in this double blinded, randomized, prospective trial was going to show us how good hormone replacement therapy was. However, oral estrogens can increase your risk of blood clots. And so that was an interesting finding. Now we tease that out. The oral estrogen did not alone, women who've had a hysterectomy did not increase the risk of breast cancer. So what was the cause then? The progestin, again, not, synth not bioidentical progesterone, but a oral progestin, in this case, Provera. And we know from research um, that was published in 2000 and I mean, the earliest, the first set of research was published by Dr. Fournier in 2005. It was a French study that looked at 54,548 postmenopausal women. And it showed they had little to, no, let me share this. Here we go. It showed that they had um, little or no increased with oral or transdermal estrogen alone or combined with oral micronized progesterone. So for example, Prometrium. However, when it was, when hormone therapy was, estrogen therapy was combined with synthetic progestins, there was an increased risk. And the conclusion that Dr. Fournier put forth in 2005 is the association between hormone replacement therapy use and breast cancer risk varies according to the progestogen used. So if it's bioidentical progesterone, there's no increased risk. But if it's a synthetic progestin, there is an increased risk. And that's really important to make note of. So that's what we want to identify and clarify. And it's great because in this study, in this report, that was published in the New York Times in this article, she mentions the different forms of hormone therapy that we have available. The most important thing to remember is that we've always been able to compound hormones. In 1999, when I started in my private practice, I learned this very quickly in working to help a woman who'd had a history of ductal carcinoma in situ of the breast. And she had significant, she was 63 year old woman, had significant issues with vaginal dryness, discomfort, and it hurt to have sex. And she said to me, this woman at age 63, she said, Dr. Anna, I'm a woman of the 60s. 
I love my husband. Sex is important to me. It's important to us. And I'd rather die than live this way. So help me. So that's really when I started digging into the research and then compounding her the safest forms of hormone that was acceptable risk for both of us, right? And I will tell you that she's in her 80s now and doing amazing, right? She's doing amazing. She maintained her cognition. She maintained her bone strength. She was skiing a few years ago and um, even up to a few years ago. So, so it's important to look at what was going on here with this study. Um, so the Women's Health Initiative study looked at only oral estrogen and progestin. They did not look at bioidentical progesterone. And even in the oral estrogen arm, there was no increased risk of breast cancer. However, there was risk of stroke. So for me, that indicated in my private practice that women who had any risk factors for cardiovascular disease or were over 50, certainly over 55, or if they were a smoker, would always be on a transdermal estrogen. So now there are bioidentical forms of, of transdermal estrogens, the Vivel dot patch, estradiol patches, things like that are, um, are bioidentical and delivered through the skin. You can compound creams, you can compound creams or trochies. This is trochie. This is the way I like to do it. Although again, uh, trochies can be absorbed, um, swallowed. So that's going to also be um, metabolized by the liver. So, and again, it watch risk factors. So how do we mitigate for risk? If we know that the benefits of hormone therapy, I like to say hormone replenishment therapy, if we know the benefits of hormone replenishment therapy are you know, are, are so many things, right? Better mental health, better cognition, stronger bones, healthier breast, better libido, improved sex drive, uh, restoration of the vaginal tissue, clitoris, vulvar tissue. All of these things are improvements in quality of a life, reduction in hot flashes. We want to use these things as physicians to help our patients in the safest way possible. So compounding bioidentical hormones is a beautiful way to do that. And again, whether we have a uterus or not, we want to use, um, whether we have a uterus or not, we want to use a bioidentical progesterone. Typically, topically, I use my balance cream, which isn't just progesterone, it's progesterone and pregnenolone and um, includes tripeptides for firming the skin as well as the anti-aging benefits, but progesterone and pregnenolone for that good memory, that brain health to help getting a good night's sleep. And that's where progesterone comes in. I've used it in clients for postpartum depression, for PMS symptoms, definitely menopause and postmenopause, bioidentical progesterone, transdermally is the safest way. And oral prescribed bioidentical progesterone is very safe as well. Again, with or without a uterus, it's really important to understand the research around this. The study that I mentioned by Dr. Fournier in 2005 looked at 54,000 women. It was not a small study. He went on to expand that study in 2008 with over 80,000 women. Again, this is a study that was done in French looking at transdermal estrogen alone or combined with oral micronized progesterone. Again, he found that there was no increased risk with bioidentical progesterone, however, an increased risk with synthetic progestin. So, so important to look at. So what did the research tell us about this oral estrogen therapy? There, um, a report came out in 2001. So before the Women's Health Initiative study ended, in the Journal of Fertility and Sterility, a study was published, and in um, it was published looking at the effect of oral versus transdermal hormone therapy on cholesterol levels in postmenopausal women. And what it looked at was that estrogen alone decreases total cholesterol, decreases LDL, increases the good cholesterol HDL. Now that's powerful. That's with oral estrogens. Um, transdermal estrogens decreases total cholesterol, decreases LDL, increases the good cholesterol, but 
it decreases triglycerides. Oral estrogens increase triglycerides. So we see an even better cardiac profile with transdermal estrogen. So it is safest way, especially if we have risk factors. Now, what about um, the concept of transdermal progest progesterone or transdermal levels of um, adding in progestin combination? Well, in combination, trans even transdermal progesterone improved the cholesterol panel. That's powerful. And then looked at a study by Canonico published in a cardiovascular magazine, he looked at oral estrogens and the increase in HSCRP. HSCRP is a highly sensitive C-reactive protein blood marker. So it will, it indicates for us the inflammation in your body. And we know that oral estrogens can increase this inflammatory marker. So if we are monitoring you with oral hormone therapy, we should be looking at an HSCRP. That is one of the numbers that, you know, I teach in my course, Magic Menopause, the labs that you need to know, critical labs that you need to know, you know, that are important to manage your health and optimize your health. And you can look at these numbers yourself. So if you are on any hormone therapy or just over time, you see that HSCRP number increasing, you're more likely for all the diseases of inflammation and stroke and heart disease. And so we want to make sure that we optimize that. Transdermal estrogen does not increase inflammation. So again, a very safe way to use it. All right. So... Um, yeah, so the Women's Health Initiative study, I'm going to go back to this article. And um, yeah, here, here's this article that was published in 2007. It was published in circulation in Cano um, by Dr. Canonico and research team. And they concluded that oral but not transdermal estrogen is associated with an increased risk of um, venous thromboembolic risk. So a, a, a venous thromboembolism. And in addition, he's, their data suggested that nor, nor pregnant derivatives may be thrombogenic, whereas micronized progesterone appear safe with respect to thrombotic risk. So that was really, that was an important finding. Again, micronized progesterone didn't increase thrombosis or blood clotting, but um, synthetic progestins did. So that was a big flaw in the Women's Health Initiative study. They only looked at oral estrogen, Premarin, which is over 30 estrogens, and an oral progestin. So that increases blood, um, blood clotting. So we think that, I mean, to a significant of four times, oral estrogen increased the risk for venous thromboembolism by 4.2. And that's, that's significant. With synthetic progestins, it increased by 3.9. And oral but not transdermal estrogen was associated with an increased risk of venous thromboembolism. So, I mean, it's really, that's the difference. And so when we're using hormonal therapy and we're using bioidentical hormone therapy, we want to make sure that we're using it the safest way possible. So the concept is that we want to use the safest form of bioidentical hormones available. And then what about testosterone and DHEA? Research with DHEA has shown over and over again, the safety profile in treating women with, you know, even breast cancer. So I've been looking at this research for many years, um, again, since late 1999, and looking at, you know, 2000, the work of um, Dr. Ferdinand Labrie out of Canada, who looked at using DHEA in women and the advantages of DHEA um, to benefit the menopausal symptoms, specifically the genitourinary symptoms of menopause with vaginal dryness, 
and incontinence, well, predominantly vaginal dryness issues. Now, the benefit that I've seen certainly working when I created my product, Jolva, in 2000, we worked on creating it from 2013 to 2016 and released it to the public in 2016. Prior to that, I was always compounding trochies and creams for my patients. So the research with DHEA was very, very safe. And that's why I could use it comfortably, again, with consenting an individual. And you've got to incorporate the lifestyle factors. It takes more than hormones to fix your hormones. So that part is really important. And the research on DHEA over and over again um, has been significantly positive. There was a study published all the way back to 1998 um, by Dr. Labrie. He looked at the inhibitory effect of DHEA on the growth of human breast cancer xenografts in nude mice, and su it supported the beneficial use of DHEA as hormone replacement therapy in women. And um, and I think that was, and many studies since that over the last two decades have been published to, um, to support that use of, of DHEA as an adjuvant for hormone therapy. But sometimes you just get a synthetic, you know, estrogen and and a progestin, you have to ask for the bioidentical progesterone, or you have to advocate for yourself and use a transdormer formula that is that is good and effective with again the right information, education, and lifestyle around it. So these are these are things that will make a difference around hormone replacement. Um, but even better than hormone replacement is hormone replenishment, because we want to this is my big beef on, on hormone replacement is oftentimes we give suppressive doses of hormones, whether it's, you know, whether it's your estrogen and progestin, progestin will shut down your ovaries, natural production, right? That's why we have progestins and birth control pills. And it's not a bioidentical progesterone. It works to shut down your ovarian response. Now we want to enhance the life of our ovaries. We want to enhance our body's hormonal production for the rest of our lives, right? I mean, don't you want your body to produce its own natural hormones as long as possible in the safest way, you know, for as long as possible? Yes, yes, I do. So that part is using adrenal adaptogens. That is part of detox, the keto green lifestyle that I talk about. All of that can make a really big difference. So I want to answer some questions that are coming in here. Um, Tracy said, what do you think of using an IUD for hormone replacement? Is that a biological hormone? The IUDs that have hormone in them, there's the Skylar and McKenna IUDs have a progestin. It is not ideal. If we need birth control, I like the Paragard non-hormonal IUD. The Paragard non-hormonal IUD is my favorite form of... Um, of birth control. I used it in between my children until I was completely menopausal, post-menopause. So at 56, I'm now post-menopause after being diagnosed at 39, early menopause, irreversible infertility, told the only way I had a chance to have another child, but it didn't look good was with egg donation. So I think that's really important information. I reversed that. And, um, and at finally at with a second, really significant perimenopause of 48. If you know my story, I talk about it in my book, The Hormone Fix. You guys, this is my magnus opus. It's going to give you a lot more than hormones to fix your hormones. So, and you can listen to the audio book. Yes, it's on Amazon, Kindle, everywhere books are sold. So, so definitely check into that. Kuka says, can one commence hormone therapy 10 years after menopause or is it too late? So this is where work on like there's, it's just never too late. It's never too late to optimize your hormones. And we do it through diet and lifestyle adaptogens. That's my formula, Mighty Maca Plus. So this is my signature formula. Mighty Maca Plus has 30 um, superfoods and the menopause capsules. So again, supporting body, not just with supplements, but with lifestyle, that's really important. So is it too late to, to support your hormones or to replenish your hormones? It's never too late. And I've had clients in their 80s that I maintained on 
bioidentical hormone replenishment protocol. So using safe and effective, working with your doctor or um, optimizing uh, over-the-counter use with the right education of bioidentical progesterone and pregnenolone, um, supporting your body's natural production of DHEA, supplementing using, um, uh, you know, the right, again, the right ingredients at the right time. So it's never too late, but I would never put someone postmenopausally on oral hormone replacement therapy because again, the risks for um, inflammation, the risk for increasing inflammation. And what do we want to do? We want to balance your hormones, decrease inflammation, and optimize your adrenal function. Those are the three key things we want to do to optimize your longevity. And um, it's never too late and it's never too early. Longevity starts in the womb. Longevity starts in the womb. So does um, Princess Warrior says, does hormone replacement therapy affect your natural cycle? Depends on the dosage of hormone replacement. In a replenishment dose, you're cycling with hormones. So um, birth control pills suppress your cycle. Um, if you're using a progesterone, again, I only use bioidentical progesterone with rare exception, so um, if you're using a progesterone, you're going to use it cyclically day 14, um, day 14 to approximate day 28 or to the day your period starts. That's typically how you'll cycle your progesterone therapy. And I typically start with, pro especially if your cycles are getting irregular. So if you're in that perimenopause state, what do you want to do? You want to balance, you want to you want to detox your body, open up those receptor sites, make sure you've got sufficient iodine, vitamin D on board, and you're supporting liver detoxification. We do that in the hormone fix. Step one is the keto green detox. So that's, that is critical. Any of the diet plans in my book will help you with hormone detox. So uh, the hormone fix, keto green 16 and menu pause. Those are my, the three books that I've written about this. I'm so passionate about you getting the lifestyle piece because that's over 90% of it. The hormones is a fraction of what you need to do. But with that said, um, uh, it's, it's part of the, it's part of the hormone replenishment process as we get older. And again, never too late to start, but the safest way possible we know is transdermal or transvaginal administration. So um, another question came in, I use a patch with both and I still have had a regular cycle. So um, understanding what hormones you're on and for um, the way you're getting them as well as the dosage, is, is important is important and how you're cycling those hormones. What I learned from Dr. Pamela Smith from the um, A4M anti-aging and regenerative medicine um, fellowship in hormone replacement is that progesterone in and of itself, progestin, progesterone, whether it's in birth control pills, hormone replacement shouldn't be taken every day. Even postmenopausally, you need one or two days off per week or three to five days off per month. One to two days off per week or three to five days off per month with progesterone to, again, not suppress your body's own natural production. So the entire hypothalamic pituitary adrenal gonadal access and thyroid is involved in that too. So optimizing your thyroid is part of hormone replenishment. And we do that with um, um, supplementation, detoxification, a keto green diet. Stephanie asked, do you recommend cycling or static for postmenopausal? Pretty much you can do estrogen, DHEA every day. I still personally take one or two days off a week, three to five days off a month. I've been doing this a long time. And I feel that that keeps my body what do you want to say on its toes balance? So I don't want to suppress my own um, natural production. You definitely want to work with a physician knowledgeable in hormone replacement therapy. And I always get asked, where do we go? And I would say, call your local approved compounding pharmacy and PCCARX.com is a list of, um, has a list of pharmacies that are certified by them. And, um, 
you can call them and say, who do you have? Call your local pharmacy and they say, who is doing a great job prescribing? Not over-prescribing hormones, not under-prescribing hormones, not focused on one thing, but gets that there's a combination. You know, I posted my hormone regimen and it's a combination with a biased um, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA combination in a trochee form that you can dissolve between your cheek and gum. And I like this because it's very easy. I'm probably going to switch to transdermal as I get older completely, but I watch my inflammatory markers. And the second piece is you can, I can use these trochees vaginally as well if needed. Now I use Jolva every single day to help with bladder control and the most important real estate of our body, clitoris to anus. That's just part of my healthy routine. I want to maintain healthy sexual function, bladder control, and keep that tissue healthy as we get old, because we know we want to live a quality life as much as, you know, as much as possible. So between pelvic floor exercises and Jolva, bioidentical hormones, the adaptogenic formulas, the Mighty Maca Plus, following a keto green lifestyle, these are key things that help me yeah, has, that have helped me get to this point. Again, reverse early menopause, breeze through menopause, and um, be a healthy, happy grandma who got to deliver my grandbaby this last year. So I was excited to be able to deliver her. Uh, a joy. It's a joy. And at, like, what is the meaning of the second half of our life, the second spring of our lives? We want to live with energy, with passion, right? With joy. So, you know, that's what we're living for here. Okay. So if you guys have written me a question, go ahead and retype it. I want to answer your, oops, I want to answer your question. And I know um, they've been uh, coming in. Can you take the Mighty Maca when you're in your mid forties? We have, you know, youth basketball teams on Mighty Maca. It's better than Gatorade, for instance. It's got all 30 adaptogens. They recover faster. I have pro athletes on Mighty Maca at all different ages, as well as an Olympic athlete and women girls, boys, it's an adaptogenic formula It really does support you. So yes, you can take it. And as a family, you can take it. Stephanie said, um, see, that was the cycling question. So Stephanie, let me know if you have any more questions around that uh, cycling. Um, Princess Warrior, I have a patch with both. Okay, answer that one. So you guys, if you have another question, go ahead and Add that in. J.M. Carrier said perimenopause here. Hormones are up and down. Lots of side effects. My doc put me on Prometrium, Prometrium for three months to regulate. Is this good? No one knows what to do with what I'm feeling. So first thing, read my book, The Hormone Fix. It takes more than hormones to fix your hormones. I think oftentimes when I have someone in perimenopause and they're having irregular menstrual cycles, you guys, I just want to pause a second. Be sure to follow me at the girlfriend doctor on social media, sign up for my website on my start here page. There's my hormone toxicity quiz. It's step one, take the hormone toxicity quiz. It will help you guide you on a journey with education. The second step is to watch my three secrets to hormone harmony masterclass. And I tell you more about my journey. This is so important, especially in perimenopause to be able to sail through menopause. Again, menopause is natural and mandatory. Suffering is optional. So I like to use, I'm glad you're using a bioidentical progesterone. And sometimes you can use that continuously for two to three months if you're having irregular cycles or cyclically from after ovulation or around day 12 or 14 till your period starts or for 14 days. And you can cycle it that way to try to recondition um, your hormonal cycle. And that can really help. So um, that is a good question. So Stephanie said, is DHA a hormone we should be taking to after menopause? I use it daily. I use it topically because it's in my Jolva cream. So DHA is something that I use daily. And I will tell you that I do in conjunction with supporting my body's natural production of DHA. When I was in my early 40s and I was struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder, burnout, adrenal exhaustion, or hypofunction. My DHEA was in its teens, 13, 17, one time doing all these other functional protocols. I got it up to 34. But as I released, as I worked on my formula to help with my energy, hormones, as well as what I believe help with my fertility. So in other words, improving ovarian function, 
um, my formula, Mighty Maca, I released that. And as I was doing that two, three scoops a day, my DHEA went up to over 200. Without doing anything else different. That's the power of supporting your body's natural production of hormones. And, um, and, and so that's a piece. So again, replenishment, don't just replace, let's get your body to make its own natural hormones. And you have to, to support DHEA, you have to do stress management. You have to improve oxytocin, the most powerful hormone of our bodies. And again, read the hormone fix. Cause I talk about, I talk about oxytocin in all my books, but I go into it in more detail and the stress cortisol oxytocin connection in the hormone fix. So, so make sure, make sure you get that. All right. Let's see. Uh, Majan says bladder control. What do you use? So bladder control is a few things. Number one, there's certain bladder retraining that you have to do. And it, sometimes it's about timed urination, watching how much you're drinking before you go to bed at night, that that's part of it, pelvic floor exercises. I have a great video on my YouTube channel on Kegel exercises. So I have a couple good videos on my, I mean, it's got hundreds of thousands of views and it's me on the tennis court with a seashell. Anyway, that'll be the video to watch for the uh, proper way to do um, pelvic floor exercises. Plus the vagina coach here on Instagram is just an amazing resource. Kim Bopney is fabulous for pelvic floor exercises and how important that is and the right way to do it. So also I use Jolva. And if you're still having trouble with bladder control, again, food can irritate your bladder. There's a few different types. Does, um, there's urgency incontinence, stress incontinence, mixed type incontinence. There's, it's called post void dribbling or when you urinate, but then you leak after you have completely felt like you completely emptied your bladder. And that is often a structural issue. So improving the condition of the tissue of the pelvic floor is, is critical. So pelvic floor exercises done properly, strengthening the pelvic floor, using a product like Jolva, which has DHEA and plant stem cells in it, as well as significantly effective emollient ingredients to help with vaginal pH and um, bladder control. That's key. You can also have your physician prescribe additional hormone therapy, including testosterone and or DHEA vaginal suppository. Prasterone was released in the USA a few years ago. So that's another thing you can do to help with that. Again, depending on the reason for the issues with bladder control. I've had four big babies. You know, I'm not shy anymore to talk about it, kind of. <laughs> but four big babies, I delivered them all vaginally. I had a very significant issue with bladder control. And I was a surgeon. I did many stress urinary incontinence procedures until I got really good at using bioidentical hormones for preoperatively. Um, you know, when I did get very good at using bioidentical hormones and uh, pre preoperatively, my patients would come in for the pre-op visit and say, Dr. Anna, I no longer have, ha have having symptoms. I'm not leaking anymore. I went for a run. I'm jogging, um, jumping on the trampoline. I'm playing, laughing, and no problem. So surgery became unnecessary. And I think that's what's really important. Again, depends on the reason, but it's powerful. Princess Warrior says, do you ship to the UK? please email my team at dranacabeca.com. So T-E-A-M at dranacabeca.com or message us in the comment section and we'll tell you where to get it in the UK. Tracy said, what book should I buy to learn about all the hormone replacements? So my book, The Hormone Fix is a great starting point. That is key. Dr. Sean Tasson's book, The Hormone uh, Bible is an excellent resource. So I also recommend his book very, very much. Okay. And Stephanie says, you mentioned taking a day or two off each week so you can make your own hormones, but in menopause, can we even make estrogen anymore? So what research has shown, and this study was published a, a, quite a number of years ago, it looked at the postmenopausal ovary. The postmenopausal ovary, even age 65, is assumed to be pro is producing levels of hormones, predominantly some testosterone, a little bit of DHEA, but you're still producing hormones. And the longer we maintain our ovaries, the less risk for cardiovascular disease we have. So, so I think that's really an important piece. Plus, 
our adrenals in the postmenopause take over production of the majority of our hormones, DHEA, progesterone, et cetera. So something to consider. We don't want to completely shut down by taking daily suppressive therapy. Definitely worth discussing with your doctor and looking at, um, call them, you know, like, uh, you know, we say vitamin holidays or medication holidays and, and see what would benefit you specifically. Um, Deba says, what do you think about internal um, progesterone cream? We, I use a bioidentical progesterone and pregnenolone, and this can be used also topically on the vulvar area versus intravaginally. Um, I have definitely prescribed intravaginal progesterone for fertility, as well as for issues with prolapse. Billy says, can I get your products in Australia? Absolutely, you can, Billy. So I would like you, you can go to um, email us or message us and we'll send you who our distributor is in Australia. Um, I would, or Elwood says, thoughts on estrogen pellets. I'm not a fan of estrogen pellets. With rare exception, would I use estrogen pellets? Um, because the levels go wonky and it's a significant high level that we're seeing in the blood. Testosterone pellets, I believe for a short term can be very, very beneficial, but avoiding estrogen pellets, especially because of the effect on the uterus, you can have breakthrough bleeding. And I rather be able to manage that by daily estrogen use transdermally or transvaginally versus with estrogen pellet. So that is my personal prescribing preference. And I have lectured and taught on hormone replacement therapy nationally and internationally. And um, there's a collegiate consensus on that. Uh, Sasha says, how about a plant-based diet for perimenopause? So I really am keto green. I like high quality proteins as much as possible. In both my books, Keto, um, keto Green 16 and my latest book, Many Paws, there are vegan keto green plans as an option. The biggest thing with um, plant-based diets is uh, processed foods, high carbs. And so you want to evaluate that on your body. So taking a break in that and trying a keto green plant-based approach is an option. But again, I am an omnivore and I believe that we're designed to eat everything. Um, Golly says, how do you know if you are in menopause, if you only have your ovaries? So women with hysterectomies, this is a great question. Um, women with hysterectomies, have, you know, and have, have maintained their ovaries, like, what are, you know, what do you do? How do you know? You can look at an FSH and LH, you can judge your, your moods, you can take your daily body temperature. It's so, I mean, it's free and it's, you know, not terribly annoying. Take your, you know, you can get ear thermometers or whatever, basal body thermometers, but check your th temperature each day. And you can see if you're ovulating or not by a rise in your temperature just like we do for fertility. So that's a way to tell. And the other thing is, is just to monitor your symptoms, taking a daily inventory of your symptoms. How are you feeling? You know, what's your energy level? Are you having brain fog? Are you feeling more reactive versus responsive? And so those are some ways to tell. And also um, it's hard to tell when you don't have a uterus because we don't know when you're, cycle technically would be what are days we would typically check if you have your uterus on day three of your menstrual cycle, day two or three, we would look at an FSH and LH and an estradiol and an antimalarian hormone. So you can have these levels checked, but just because we don't know where you are in your cycle, it's a challenge, but the antimalarian hormone would be a test that, that you could look at. Um, some question here. Anne says, women need education on hormones. So true. Um, Wanda said, I need hormone replenishment. Aura says, as always bringing value. Thank you, Aurest. 
Shamila, Dr. Anna, could you talk about hormonal headaches? Absolutely. She said, I'm in perimenopause. Can hormone replenishment help? Yes. Well, first it's detoxifying. De you know, the first step is to detoxify, detoxify your hormones with the, um, in the hormone fix, we go through a keto green detox and we we'll support your body with detoxification support, keto green detox supplements, mighty maca supplements, plus the, you know, a low inflammatory modified elimination diet. That is key. And I tell you in doing that, while, you know, I would ask questions of my clients. If you go to my website, dranna.com, take, go to my start here page, take the quiz. That's step one. That's the hormone toxicity quiz. When you take that quiz, it gives you a number. Anyone with a number over 10, I mean, we need detox, right? We need detox. So when I did that on my client, and this is why I put it online is because as I did that with clients and I put them through the deep detox while I waited for their labs to come back, they'd always come in for their follow-up lab visit and say, Dr. Anna, I'm 90% better. Or I'm 100% better. I haven't felt this good in 15 years. That's because we're cleansing the system, opening up the body's receptor sites. And that's powerful. Melissa asked, does transdermal estrogen help with brain fog or do you need to take it orally? Transdermal estrogen also helps. But the key thing is, now, this is what I realized just through my own menopausal journey, having at 48 going down this downward slope still with underlying PTSD and um, struggling with uh, brain fog, memory loss, mood, agitation, irritability, all of those things. And um, this is where it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. Progesterone is a neuroprotective hormone. That's why I use progesterone and pregnenolone in my balance formula. It's because it's neuroprotective. It helps with memory, it helps with relaxation, increases your body's GABA, which is a anti-anxiety natural hormone of your body, right? So we want that and we want a good night's sleep, especially as we get older. And this was a big thing as I started using progesterone in women who have had a hysterectomy, they would come back in and say, Dr. Ann, I feel like a the fog has lifted over and over and over again. So we don't only need progesterone if we have a uterus. If we've had a hysterectomy, we still need bioidentical transdermal progesterone. It's the safest. I use pregnenolone too because of its neuroprotective uh, benefits, memory enhancement, and mood uh, benefits. So that's why I combine progesterone and pregnenolone in my balance formula and use that on a regular basis. So um, and when you, yeah, so using progesterone is more important than estrogen for brain fog. Um, Billy says, can you get it in Australia? Yes, email my team at Dr. Anna Kabeca or message us in uh, the chat uh, comments. And however you do that, message me <laughs> and you will um, find out. Uh, we'll, we'll send you information on Australia and our international distributors. Nancy said, I'm 73 years old. Is it too late for hormone replacement? So it's not too late to detox, not too late to get keto green. It's not too late to balance your body naturally because I don't know and I can't give you medical advice. And plus I like hormone replenishment, not replacement. It's important that you get educated first and foremost um, on the, you know, the 90%, the, the lifestyle for hormone balancing. So all of that is in my book, The Hormone Fix and more in keto green 16 and just great recipes and five different menu plans in menu pause. So that's the key thing. And then balancing your body with bioidentical progesterone transdermally is an option possibly for you, but you have to talk to your doctor about it, Nancy. All right. Alan says, should I have, uh, Ava says, should I have my hormone level checked before taking any supplements? Depends on what you're going through. I, what gets measured gets managed. So testing is really important. In my program called Magic Menopause, we go through an entire hour and a half session of lab testing, but also what's optimum. What are optimum labs versus, um, what, you know, optimum labs versus normal labs. We want to be optimum, not normal. So I regularly check my hormones, my labs. And so um, the key markers, though, that are going to give me the best um, markers for longevity is HSCRP, 
vitamin D 25 hydroxy, hemoglobin A1C, and DHEAS. And I would add in uric acid based on um, Dr. David Perlmutter and the work around uric acid. So I would add that in. So those are the five key hormones I would watch over those five key lab tests I would watch over time and work on optimizing our detoxification, supporting our body naturally. If you're on supplemental hormone therapy, yes, you should get it monitored. Um, blood, saliva, urine, all of these body fluids tell us something. Okay. Um, question came in. When do you know if it's time for bioidentical hormones? Um, if you're in perimenopause. So first thing is you've got a detox. So take the hormone toxicity quiz, go through the hormone fix and or my magic menopause eight week program online. So these are great ways to try and supplement. I always do foundational mighty maca plus a good omega three, make sure your vitamin D is optimized and let's see how you're doing. And then perimenopause cycling in progesterone and post and menopause and beyond cycling in progesterone transdermally or by prescription of oral progesterone only. So see, other questions have came in. Sweet Louise said, hi, any plans on getting Jolva available to Canadians? Do you have a friend in America? We can send it to you. Currently, we do not send Jol sell Jolva to Canada, and I apologize. They won't let us. So DHEA is by prescription only in Canada. Um, what in a question about what I call the post-drip condition? It is um, post-void incontinence. So it's when you leak or when you dribble after you've gone to the bathroom. So post-voiding incontinence. And again, conditioning the pelvic floor, um, doing pelvic floor exercise, getting evaluated, and then using DHEA and or testosterone vaginally can be a step to help to see if that makes a difference. All right, let's see. De bazook. Um, okay. All right. Are right, there any other questions that have come in? Oh my gosh, Crystal wrote, what do you suggest to a person who can't have hormone replacement? So this is where we want to really support your body's own natural detoxification and hormone production. The most important thing is whether we're producing our hormones naturally or we're supplementing, we want to make sure we're detoxifying them well. So healthy gut, um, following again, a keto green lifestyle, using healthy probiotics, adding in adaptogenic support, for example, menopause support capsule. This is 30 superfoods with organic maca, turmeric, quercetin, resveratrol, uno de gato, herb, um, milk thistle. I mean, 30 superfoods combined to really help. And what we see is an improvement in natural DHEA and natural progesterone levels. So that's, that's, um, that's helpful. So I would do all of those things and really have a discussion of, of why you can't do hormone replacement. Certainly if you're undergoing cancer therapies, we want to look at what's the safest way. Could we do um, vaginal uh, or topical vulvar hormonal therapy, estrogen with DHEA, DHEA alone? It's definitely something to discuss. And I typically use progesterone and DHEA. Um, sweet Louise said, I can't order Jolva in Canada. Yes, because DHA is only available by prescription in Canada. So we can only mail this within the US. And um, yes, we have our products on Amazon and at dranna.com, dranna.com. Uh, Denise said, what about Interosa vaginal suppositories? I love Interosa. Uh, I love the work that went into Interosa. It's a DHEA 6.5 milligram vaginal suppository. I think that is a great product. And again, a lot of safety and efficacy around it. I always, I like topical, like topical cosmetic, a vulvar cosmetic. And I made this for that reason that if it, like I always say, if it's not bringing you pleasure, don't insert it. But the work that DHEA does to decrease 
vaginal dryness. And just like with intra rosa, vaginal dryness, improve your body's natural hormone secretion. I mean, it's game changing. It, it decreases the vaginal pH. So you have less bacterial vaginosis, less odor, your body's naturally producing its hormone. And we see that we see that all the time with Jolva and with Intra Rosa. That's great. And if you're going to do even a suppository for incontinence issues or to prepare yourself for possibly if you're looking at incontinence surgery, you want to add in testosterone if you're going to use that vaginally, at least for a short time anyway. Lauren said, I've not slept in seven years from menopause, moody and weight gain. Well, I, I hear you. So you definitely want to listen. Go to my website, the start here page, take my hormone toxicity quiz. We'll walk you through step by step by step. My magic menopause program, I brought it online in 2014. We've had thousands of women go through that. I've created supplements to help me and help others with getting restorative night's sleep and balancing our hormones. I mean, I'm telling you, in you know, when I was 48, it was hard to like brain fog, memory memory issues. I mean, I name it, I struggled with all of it. And so this has been a journey it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. So it is about healing from the inside out. And it's all wrapped into my keto green way and hormone replenishment programs for um, physicians that want certification in hormone replen in my hormone replenishment method, they can email team at dranacabeca.com to get on my waiting list. Okay. Stephanie said, is there a target level of estradiol we should shoot for in menopause when we do our blood tests and adjust dosages accordingly? This is where it gets tricky, Stephanie, because if we're, depends on how we're using hormones. If we're taking oral hormones, we'll see them in the blood. Transdermal hormones, not so much. So we really do. It's because there's not an ideal way, and this really is a struggle. There's not an ideal way to test your hormones because hormones are energetic molecules. Hormones are energetic molecules. So, you know, until we have a really good way of measuring them over a 24 hour period, a 30 day cycle, we're, you know, it's the art of medicine that comes into play. And women, especially have good intuition. You have to really be in touch with how do you feel? Now, sometimes we we don't even know how we feel because we're so used to faking it. I don't know if anyone can relate to that, but, you know, or people pleasing. And I got to make sure everyone else is taken care of before I'm taken care of. And we're so out of touch with how we really feel, but how we feel, we, you know, we want to optimize that on a daily basis. So when we look at target levels, I do go through target levels in my magic menopause program in context. That is like an hour, that's an eight week program and the lab testing and optimal lab uh, evaluation is a course, is a class in and of itself that we go into that in detail. So I highly recommend that. And that is my magic menopause program. More information on that at dranna.com. So you want optimal levels, but again, it depends on how you're taking it versus how um, we're measuring it. So urine will tell us one thing, saliva will tell us something else, and blood will tell us something else. And it's important to look at all three at some point. Anna says, can you talk about early ovarian failure? Is hormone replacement therapy a must? Um, you know, early ovarian failure, this is such a specialty in medical practice. This is where um, you can uh, share a little bit more about what you're going through, but early ovarian failure, premature, premature ovarian failure is, um, I was diagnosed with that at 39, reversed it. So again, replenishment, supporting your body's natural production of hormone. Why are the ovaries failing? What's going on with the HPA axis? Why is it being shut down? Is there an autoimmune condition in place? Really work with a functional doctor about this because it's such a specialty area. And there are many reasons that we could be in ovarian early in fa failure. For me, it was trauma. It was pure downright trauma. So completely shut down my HPA axis. So I think it's, you know, it's important to look at, look at that. Um, Mindy from Energy Holistic Health says, what's optimal range for testosterone? So postmenopausally, if I'm looking in your blood, it's 60 to 90. That's where I like to see it. Now, 
you know, not higher, not too much higher, not too low, but it really depends on how you're doing. So women very different than men. Men, we want to look at it at 600 to maybe a thousand, but for women around 60 to 90. But what's the sweet spot for you and where is that testosterone going and why, if it's low, why is it low? We have to ask that when our hormones are low or if we're experiencing early ovarian failure or perimenopause, why? What is suppressing our body's natural productions? Always toxins. It's always stress, right? These are two key factors that play with our hormones. So uh, managing that, working, increasing heart rate variability, increasing oxytocin, insulin sensitivity, managing cortisol, all of that is in my book, The Hormone Fix. I'm going to show that to you again, because this is my magnus opus. Listen to the audiobook, get the Kindle, Anywhere books are sold, The Hormone Fix is also at my website at dranna.com. So Billy said, should you have labs first if you have gone through menopause totally without assistance? It's always a good idea to get labs, but don't delay on starting whatever your next right step is. And that is for me, take first take my hormone toxicity quiz. And that is on my start here page at dranna.com, D-R-A-N-N-A.com. So be sure to go there. Um, Tracy said, what do you think about rubbing bioidentical um, cream on your calves? I, mean, I think you want to alternate where you're using a cream. With my instructions that come with my um, progesterone, my balance cream, which is progesterone, pregnenolone, tripeptides, and essential oils, great um, hormone balancing, cosmetic cream, smells really good is you want to rotate sites where you where you apply it and you want to apply it to thin skin so where you see veins so you know you see veins on your inner arm on your chest on your neck so you can rub it in these places lower abdomen but you don't want to do the same place all the time because you will saturate the receptor site so sometimes when i see my patient and they've been doing great 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 and then they're like, oh, I'm not, not getting great results anymore. What's going on? I'm like, well, tell me what you're doing. You know, how are you eating? What's your, show me your three-day food diary and your sleep, you know, scores and all this good stuff. And, you know, how are you taking your hormones? And if they're using the cream in the same spot every day, like you just have to start rotating it, take three days off and start rotating it and rotating where you're putting it. And then usually my client is like, oh, feels so much better. The other thing with the, uh, the creams, if you're using creams and not getting results, it's often because you have a gut dysbiosis or unhealthy GI tract. So in functional medicine, we say we can't, you know, I will say can't heal your hormones without healing your gut. That's why detox. That's why we recommend, you know, food dietary changes. That's why my whole keto green lifestyle and supplementing with probiotics, how these can all make a really big difference. Um, let's see. Mary said, I'm 58 and still getting periods every three or four months. Is this normal? I think that is optimal. Now when, um, but again, I can't say it's normal until you have been evaluated by a gynecologist and have had a pelvic ultrasound just to make sure, right? Just to make sure do day three labs and day, um, and do a pelvic ultrasound, look at those things, check thyroid. There can be other reasons to have irregular uh, menstrual cycles. So you want to get that evaluated by your gynecologist first and foremost. All right, Mary. But the longer we can keep our ovarian function, the better longevity according to the research. So ovarian function is a marker of longevity. Uh, so uh, Sasha said, you mentioned adrenal adaptogens. Could you possibly talk a little more on that? Yeah, I learned about adrenal adaptogens part of my own journey after I was 39 and diagnosed with early ovarian failure and early menopause, irreversible infertility, and it failed cycle after cycle at the highest doses of injectable fertility meds. And I ended up in Peru. And in Peru, I learned about maca. It's an adaptogenic root herb that now I know improves DHEA, improves progesterone levels. And at the time, all I knew at that time, that was 2006, all I knew is that it, it was used by the ancient Incan warriors and they would drink it before they went out to battle and they would um, 
increase their stamina. And in Peru, they always give you a little wink and say it's the Peruvian Viagra. So, you know, like, I'm like all into that. Like, I'm definitely going to drink this stuff, right? But I couldn't understand, I couldn't stand the taste of maca. So as a family of chefs and gastronomiques, and um, I started um, using, I'm like, if this is a superfood, what other superfoods are out there? And so I started incorporating other superfoods um, to my combination. And I really do attribute it to reversing my early menopause with God's grace and God's guidance, guidance and wisdom as the major effect. And we know that maca is an adaptogen, turmeric, resveratrol, quercetin all have adaptogenic properties. And they're all in my formula, um, Mighty Maca and my menopause support formula. So this helps with hot flashes, with mood swings, with energy, and um, it helps with alkalinization, detoxification, all the combination of which work really, really well on that. So yeah, you guys, this has been great. Are you, uh, okay. We've been on an hour and a half. <laughs> There are more questions. If you guys want, please message me. I'll answer a couple more here. Um, let's see. The question is, uh, when would you recommend taking Mighty Maca? What time of day? I typically take it in the morning. Our bodies are detoxing all night, right? And and um, and it's important that we eliminate and help support our body's detoxification. So I typically drink it in the morning with, uh, do the powder formula, Mighty Maca with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. A uh, lot of good information on my website about Mighty Maca Plus combination. And I typically take it in the morning. I'll take another, you know, uh, like I'll take some capsules in the afternoon or another, um, I'll add it to my smoothie or take another shot of Mighty Maca in water in the evening. So great questions. Sarah said, my doctor says that my hormones are normal, but I have migraines. Okay. So menstrual migraines. And I mean, this is something that's really critical. They're often food triggers. So we have to cleanse the gut. So, you know, modified elimination diet, detox, my keto green hormone, um, my keto green detox in my books are excellent to start with. And I would supplement with magnesium L3 and eight, my better brain and sleep formula on my website has magnesium L3 and eight. Look for that combination or get that one because magnesium supports over 200 processes in our body and is really triggering, um, is really supportive of triggered, um, migraines. The other piece too, with menstrual migraines is using progesterone and using progesterone in that luteal phase and sometimes adding a bioidentical patch of estrogen at the first day of your cycle to avoid that menstrual migraine. That is a great question. So many people suffer and those are a couple things that I know. Cleaning up the diet, no gluten, no dairy, um, breaking up with sugar, getting keto green, that is critical. Cheryl said, I have enjoyed your book. I've been working on detox. Thank you. I haven't looked in the last 48 hours, but the quick start bundle is sold out. This is temporary, but we have the 40, um, we have the bags of 40 of the keto green shake. So definitely get that one. Um, email my team if you have any questions. We are sold out of our, our Keto Green 16 packs. And it's true um, with our gold package for our Keto Green Detox. But you can do the Deluxe package and that has the Keto Green 40. We're expecting the Keto Green 16 to be back in at the end of February. Uh, Angel said, I've only just joined this live. She said, are your products natural and are they all we need to use if menopausal? I talked about using bioidentical hormone. So bioidentical hormone therapy prescribed. I use trochies. Um, as I get older, I'll probably switch to, um, I'll probably switch to transdermals. I use a quarter of my trochee the way I have it compounded between my cheek and gum. And that just dissolves. I just put that in. That just dissolves. And you ideally don't want to swallow a lot of the hormone down, but it nor normally it does. So you got to make sure you're watching HSCRP because it is bioidentical hormones in this trochee and we're taking it orally. So we have to watch that inflammatory marker, which I do. And it's amazing, Let, you know, one or less for the HSCRP. That's what you want that lab value to read. And all my products are natural and clean. And that's the whole thing, especially why I created my uh, balance cream 
and why I created Jolva because there wasn't anything that I found acceptable. So, you know, I wanted something that was acceptable and natural and most importantly, effective quickly. So, okay, Tracy said, I'm 50 and still in perimenopause. My doctor tested my hormones and said my testosterone is low and wants me to use bioidentical testosterone cream from a compounding pharmacy. But I'm glad that your doctor is open to using bioidentical. So first steps for me before I prescribe a cream is that we do a keto green detox. We balance your hormones, support liver detox. So my keto green detox supplements, add in Mighty Maca because you want to support phase one and phase two liver and support your body's natural production of DHEA, which is a precursor to testosterone. So let's get that DHEA up and see, do we still need testosterone? Why is your testosterone low? Are you very stressed? How's your heart rate variability and cortisol management? Those are things we want to look at. And sometimes, yes, give me some testosterone cream to get me through this hump. And um, because I'm perimenopausal, but definitely a little bit goes a long way. Uh, Our hormones affect our physiology. Our physiology affects our behavior in good and bad ways. So we need to pay attention to that. So that, in addition, is a key a key component, not just to prescribe it, but do the lifestyle. When we're looking at, you know, what's the magic pill, the magic wand, you know, what's the quick fix? There isn't any. It's everything in combination from the thoughts we keep, from the hours we sleep, from the people we connect with and love, all of the, the food we eat, the water we drink, All of these things have a critical power on our body. So Billy says, uh, "Magnesium can magnesium be affected by menopause?" As I cannot keep well maintained. So magnesium is involved in 200 processes of our body. The magnesium L3 nate crosses the blood brain barrier and it's critical to make sure we optimize magnesium. When you're testing magnesium, again, I teach this in my magic menopause class, we want to look at red blood cell magnesium, red blood cell magnesium. You guys be sure to follow me at the girlfriend doctor, sign up on my website at dranna.com do my hormone toxicity quiz. That is step one in understanding what's your score? How toxic are you? How are these symptoms related, you know, to hormone imbalance? And what is my next right step? Then watch my three secrets to hormone harmony. So go to my start here page at dranna.com. And um, let's, let's get optimized. Does that sound good? Um, MQ Traveler said, is vaginal atrophy reversible? Yes. Yes. And I would start with pelvic floor exercise, increased muscle, blood flow, Jolva, which has DHE and plant stem cells. My vulvar cosmetic, use it clitoris to anus because it's not just the vagina that we worry about. We want to improve clitoral sensitivity. We want to avoid hemorrhoids and anal fissures, keep the entire vulvar tissue healthy and um, well lubricated. So All right. Lisa said, uh, joining late 51 and gaining weight in the stomach area and the scale continues to go up. I, I've patients would come in, Lisa and say, Dr. Anna, I'm gaining five, 10, 20 pounds without doing anything different. I mean, I get that. I was there myself when I was 48, had lost 80 pounds, kept it off for years. Then all of a sudden without doing anything different, I was gaining 20 pounds overnight. And so that led me to the discovery of keto green and why ketosis is really powerful for brain health. Gluconeogenesis in the brain is an estrogen dependent process, hormone dependent, most likely affected by our drop sharp decline in progesterone as well, because the use of glucose as a fuel in the brain decreases along the same slope that progesterone decline is. Now, use of glucose in the brain is hormone dependent, but the use of ketones in the brain is not. So like in this um, article in the New York Times, the author writes about brain fog, these menopausal symptoms and how critical it was for hormone replacement, but even more so with this, it's that, that function of improving brain fuel. And that is by getting into ketosis. 
Um, you can use a drink like Kinetic, which is exogenous ketones, but ideally we're getting into ketosis, into a fat burning state. So that's powerful. Tanya said, why are my legs from below my knees bugging me? Feels like shin splint. So I would look at magnesium fascia. Fascia is a really important piece. Dr. Anjali Aki, who does my Keto Green 16 program in her integrative medicine clinic in Northeast Georgia and Gaines, I mean, Northeast Florida and Gainesville, Florida, she runs Keto Green 16 clinics. You guys, if you're in that area of North Florida, Go see Dr. Anjali Aki at North Florida Integrative Medicine, NFIM, North Florida Integrative Medicine. She's amazing. So, um, and she's done all this research on fashion hormones. So progesterone, that's in one case, I may use balance cream on your legs, increase your magnesium and, um, and see if that helps because the fascia is connected. Um, Dita says, how do I get an appointment with you? Please email my team. I don't see patients one-to-one. -one. I train physicians and coaches in this, in my hormone replenishment process. So um, at this time. Mila says, is it recommended to take oral progesterone and testosterone drops only? There are some, you know, there are oral um, progesterone tinctures and testosterone tinctures that are options. Um, so you guys, there's been so many good questions here. Um, I thank you. Definitely send a message. I'm going to wrap this up. First step is, um, first step is go to dranna.com and do my hormone quiz. Step one, take my hormone quiz, and that'll lead you on a journey with me. Um, Sherry says, keto green kit is out of stock. Email my team. We have the deluxe kit still available. The 16 packs are out, but the 40 serving is available. So we are um, substituting that serving. I want to answer Denise's question said, why is Jolva exp expensive? Jolva is $69. That's less than a dollar a day. It's a compounded formula that is shown to reverse age the vagina. I have a 65 year old patient and she says, doctor, you know, she's a, her gynecologist told her she has the vagina of a 25 year old. She's been using Jolva for years now, reversing vaginal changes, bladder issues. That is priceless. It is less expensive than anything I could compound for you via prescription and works even better. That was my goal to create something over the counter that worked better than anything I could compound. So that is Jolva. Um, you guys, so many good questions. I thank you. Uh, thank you for being here and be sure to follow me at the girlfriend doctor, share this live with a friend and I will see you again soon. So let me know what you liked and what more you would like to know. So thank you guys so much. And you want to put a comment in, tell me what pearl that you learned. That's important. There's um, a question about endometriosis came in. I mean, anything we can do to decrease inflammation, balance our hormones, heal the gut, make us less sticky, so to speak, is going to help. And definitely endometriosis is very tricky. So empowering your body's hormone balance is key. Golly uh, said, thank you. Very informative. Love your mighty Maka and Jolva. You are very welcome. Um, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for all your questions. Follow me at The Girlfriend Doctor and take step one, which is my hormone quiz at dranna.com. God bless you all. Till next time. Thank you guys.